Well, hello and welcome back. Today we're looking at a monster of an amplifier. At least by weight. Uh, it has a giant transformer in it. This thing probably weighs like 30 pounds. So, got it for uh, 20 bucks, which is a pretty good deal if I can get this working. And uh, it said on that note that all power transistors are bad. So we'll see about that. So, it turns on. At least the display does. You can hear some clicking and stuff going on in there, but yeah, that uh, the display seems to work fine. Just pressing some buttons, seeing what happens. Uh, something interesting to take note of is that there's no crackling when you change the volume knob. So I wanted to make sure it wasn't just the tuner that was bad, so I got my uh, cassette deck out and plugged it into the tape input and nothing so i have that tape monitor button pushed in so yeah no change pushing that in or out doesn't seem to matter what i press and yeah, that am fm switch works so that's nice see yep it's broke. So time to take this thing apart. Uh, just uh, six screws around the side. And it's a bit of a mess inside. There's definitely a lot of wires. So unfortunately, removing the cover didn't fix it. So <laughs> gotta try something else now. So that note on it said that all of the power transistors were bad on it so the transistors are on the bottom i can kind of see them through this uh this grill so get the bottom plate off and yeah look at them all there's a ton of them in this machine i have no idea why there's so many but uh you can see the little x the guy put on uh, every single one of them now, as I have probably explained in the commentary, when I purchased this, the guy at the store was like, oh yeah, we had our guy test this, and he found that every single power transistor was bad on this. Which is, if that's true, that's, that's a lot of the work done for me, but it's also like, how does that happen? How does every single transistor go bad on a device like this? And it's a little funny to me, because all of these look originally soldered, and I've, I've always been under the impression that if you're testing transistors, you need to remove them from the board, and these, these definitely don't look like they've been removed. Um, but yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take out just a couple of them uh, and test them and see if they are bad. And if the ones I test are bad, I'm just gonna assume that that guy was correct and they're all bad now. Order some replacements, and I will get those swapped out. So it's not unheard of for these transistors to go bad, at least in my own experience. Uh, and that experience is one other receiver amplifier thing that I fixed. Uh, and in that case, it, the tr these big power transistors were bad. So I think I took out like four of them. I just randomly picked them uh, just to see. These are actually kind of a pain to, to get out. Um, so I use that solder sucker plunger thing. It, that, I mean, it works okay. This is kind of a lot of solder for it though. So I had to kind of pry them up while also keeping that solder melted. Um, so it was definitely a lot of work to do, but yeah, I got it out. Alrighty, so I've gotten all these transistors removed uh, and it's just like a random selection of the ones that are there. I think I've got one of each and maybe a few duplicates of the different uh, transistors and I've tested them and I have two different ways to test them. I have an old for old fashioned for me way of just using the diode setting on a multimeter and then testing across uh, for the voltage drop between like the emitter and the base, the base and the emitter, such and such. See so if anything's uh, closed that it shouldn't be or if the voltage drop is higher than it should be. Uh, and doing via that method, they all tested fine. They're all perfectly within that 
0.45 to 0.9 voltage drop across them. Like the PNPs are closed where they should be closed and so on and so forth. Now, I recently got this fancy new multimeter and this has a way you can actually just test uh, the transistors via this uh, socket thing. And you'll test the beta value of these transistors via HFE. Now, I don't understand any of that. I don't know what that means at all. It's some kind of ratio between current or something. But you just look up the transistors, you get their data sheet, and the manufacturer provides what the range of that HFE beta value should be. So for example, for uh, this transistor, it's D1238. The beta value should be between 140 and 280. Um, and I tested the beta value of 84. And I think that's kind of dependent on temperature too. I don't know, I don't understand this. I, this doesn't make, like I, I have no conception of what that number means. Like maybe it's sometimes it's okay to be a little low. Maybe you just don't want to be above the maximum number. I have no idea. Um, so I'm just gonna trust the older method because this has worked for me in the past in identifying bad transistors. Um, so, and I'm also biased because I, I was, trying to figure it out and to replace every transistor in this it would be like ninety dollars to get all of them uh, so I'm gonna start looking into other things to see maybe why there's no output and it's also like I mentioned previously it just doesn't it doesn't make sense to me how every single power transistor would be bad I fixed one amplifier in the past and that had two of them that had gone bad and even then I never really figured out what had happened to them. I, I had assumed that they just got overheated. And I guess that's possible here, but for every single one to be overheated, I don't know, that seems that seems kind of crazy. And also the, the prior one that I'd fixed, they had overheated, or I, theoretically they had overheated, and then they uh, closed, like they uh, like uh, short-circuited within each other, and then it was popping a fuse. Uh, so that was, it was causing other issues besides just the, like once that transistor went, it was causing other issues. And that's, that's not happening here. Everything else seems to be working perfectly fine. There's just no audio output. So I'm going to keep looking into it and see what I can figure out. Something I did do with all these transistors though is, and I'm, I'm, pro I'm sure this is not what you're supposed to do, <laughs> but I, uh, replacing all of the thermal compound underneath them. Because uh, I know that that stuff definitely goes bad over time. Um, so I'm just using isopropyl alcohol to clean away the old stuff. And I have I have just tons of this uh, thermal paste uh, from years of building computers. So this is probably some very overkill grade of thermal paste for these transistors. But they get nothing but the best. And uh, like I said, I'm, I'm sure you're not supposed to just bend these these up. Because you're going to... You do that enough and you'll, you'll eventually break them, I'm sure. But... They all seem to survive, so I just gotta now get all the ones I removed and put those back in. So, now that I know it's not the transistors, or at least I think it's not the transistors, I'm just going to start looking at other places on the board. So I have to remove this tuning board. Uh, so this has the radio tuner, it has the display on it. So get this out of the way and I can look at stuff below it. Because that's more of the uh, amplification. And like I mentioned previously, it, it's just, there's so many wires in this thing. It's just, it's kind of a rat's nest. So, little update. Got this uh, taken apart some more. So I got the tuner out of the way, and now we have the main amplifier power supply board down here. And looking at it, there's nothing that stood out to be explosively bad. No blown up fuse, no blown up resistors or blown capacitors, no scorch marks. Everything looks perfectly fine. Um, but I did see there's an L and an R with a wire coming out of it. So I'll readjust the camera and show you that. So right down here is what stuck out to me. We see the L and the R. And this is pins like 18, 19, and 20, I think. And looking at that on the service documentation, those go out to the outputs for the tape. So that's like the tape output, and then there's another one for the tape input. And that gave me a great idea. I was like, oh, 
there's nothing coming out of the amplified signal here, but I wonder if there's something coming out of the tape output signal. And so I've got my little amplifier I usually use to test stuff plugged in to the output of the tape. And sure enough, it's getting a signal. So there's nothing wrong with the tuner. I'm assuming there's nothing wrong with any of the inputs now. So the problem, we have just isolated it down to something between the signal out and the amplification, which really doesn't narrow it down, but it does give you a little more hope for fixing this. Okay, so here's my current theory right now, at least what I'm gonna investigate. So right here are these outputs, and that's what uh, we saw that it was getting a signal. Now this is coming out of up here in this mess. There's a right channel and a left channel, something or something up here. Uh, and then also we have this giant mess up here, which I won't even begin to try to comprehend. But this is the left channel amplification, I think. And then this is the right channel amplification, which I, th I think they're just identical, which is why they did this on the schematics. Now both of these feed into this thingy, and then those go to the outputs. Now, what I'm thinking right now is that it's nothing in here is wrong. And the only reason I think that is because there's no signal coming out of both of the left and the right. It's not isolated to the left channel or the right channel. If, if it was, then I would assume it would be one of these sections of amplification don't work. So the only theory I have is that something in here goes wrong because this is what then sends it out to the speaker terminals or maybe something up here before it goes into these inputs. So right now, I'm gonna investigate that area. So I blew it up. Uh, so this is a blown up. So I'm just gonna check all of these resistance values and just see if anything looks weird. There's this IC here, and I don't know how to test that, but uh, I'll check it out. Let's see what I figure out. Well, this is quite some time later. Uh, and I've spent a lot of time trying to trace the signal to figure out why there doesn't seem to be getting any signal into the amplification stage. And the reason that I've discovered is because I'm an idiot. Now I'm sure a lot of you can notice why, <laughs> what the issue is here, but it took me to just see a picture of the back panel of this in the service manual to realize something. So looking at this picture, those are bridged and these are not. And uh, yeah, so that uh, that's not gonna help. These need to be bridged for you to get a signal out of it. I don't know what this is for maybe to send it off to like some kind of noise reduction thing before going back into the amplifier or preamplifier? I have no idea. But I got this like this with those little bridges not connected. So I'm gonna go connect those real quick and we're gonna see if that is what was wrong with this. That would be unbelievable if that's what was wrong with this. <laughs> Okay, so kind of good news and bad news. The good news is, is there is a signal now getting to the amplification and the amplification is gonna be working fine. It sounds fine. Uh, it's working on both channels, but it's only playing it for like a second and then it switches off. And I'm thinking the issue is a relay that's like right down in here. Cause I had looked at that previously because I thought that might be uh, an issue just because it was a problem with both channels. That was, I mean, that was because I didn't have it plugged in. But now that we have that rectified, it's, I, I don't know, it, you can hear it click on and then it clicks off. 
within a second. So I don't know if there's something wrong with that relay or if there's something wrong with the circuitry around it. So we got good, we got something good to investigate though. Something solid, finally. I've been working on this thing way too long. So I'm gonna take this apart again uh, and start looking at that relay and all the driving circuitry around it. So this is the relay that we're interested in. So I'm just popping the, the cover off to take a better look at it. So we can see when I turn it on, it pops on and then it pops off again. Enforcing that relay closed, uh, the music works. So the idea I had was just replace this IC because this is what controls the relay. And it's, it's kind of a brute force approach. I tested the resistors and stuff and it just, it didn't fix it. So I kind of just ran out of ideas. I'm like, ah, oh, maybe this IC went bad. So that's the old one I took out. I mean, it physically looks fine. And then that's the new one uh, that I got to replace it. So fingers crossed <laughs> that this works and No clicking of the relay, so it clicked on and it didn't click off, but now the tuner doesn't seem to be working. <laughs> click on, and it stays on. It's doing what we want it to do. Hmm. But uh, that was because I, I soldered it in upside down. <laughs> <laughs> Well, 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 quite some time has passed and I have finally got this thing working. Now I'm not gonna say that I have fixed it, but it is now working. It'll stay playing. It doesn't just switch off now. So how did we end up here? So switching out this IC did not fix anything. I had installed it backwards, which is not a good thing to do. It blew the fuse on the, t the tuner. I had a replacement for the fuse, so that wasn't too big of a deal. Uh, and it didn't, I don't think I killed anything else that I've discovered yet. Uh, and I, I don't even think I killed the IC. I just took it out and turned it over. Um, and it's, it, it didn't fix anything, but nothing else was broken. It was just doing the exact same thing that the old one was doing. Now I probably could just put this old one back in, but that's a lot of, that, that's a lot of pins to solder. I don't want to do that again. And so it basically told me that nothing was wrong with this IC, so that I didn't need to fix it. But there is something wrong with the IC, or at least something wrong around it, or some function of it, because that is what is controlling this relay, and that relay is what's allowing the music to come out or out of the machine through the speaker terminals. So I got the data sheet for this integrated circuit, and it has lots of little functions in it. It has over voltage detection, it has AC detection, it has, uh, I think that's actually it. But it, essentially it's a safety feature. That's the whole point of this relay. It's just to protect your speakers. When you plug something in or you plug the amplifier in, you can get a lot of current to rush into it. And apparently that can be bad for the speakers if it goes directly to it, which kind of makes sense to me. Because I kind of, I, I, I was at the point where I was like, what if I just bypass the relay? And I looked that up and other people had asked that question too. And online forums are pretty strongly saying, do not do that. You're putting your speakers at a lot of risk if you just completely bypass that relay because those inrush currents and those overload uh, protections can, can save your nice speakers. That being said, I'm not sure if what I've done to this will protect it anymore. That's, I, I think if any of you have opinions on this please let me know but one of the aspects that this thing has is this output offset detection feature and 
what I gathered is that that's basically checking the DC current going to your speaker, uh, or at least the the going yeah going to your speakers. And if it gets above or below too much of something, it'll trigger that IC and cut the relay. And that's to protect your speakers. Now, all of these formula are to decide the threshold that it will trigger at. And I believe what was happening is that threshold was being met, essentially. It was going just slightly below the threshold. Now, the weird thing to me was it didn't seem to be like a dangerous level of a threshold. I measured the 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 pin too, which is what this is detecting off of, and it was like point negative point two volts, and that apparently was above the threshold because this has a default threshold of like negative point one seven. And I looked around for a long time to try to figure out what was causing it to go below the threshold. And I couldn't find anything. All of the resistors were fine. Any capacitors I found were fine. I, I could not explain it. Maybe one of the transistors in this thing is slightly bad. And I, again, I don't, I don't know. So what I did is I changed the threshold. So let me show you that. So these two jankily put in resistors are replacements for the resistors that used to be there. I'll, I'll put this in properly, but this was just a quick and easy test this if the theory worked. So I almost fell. So these are, I think 150K ohm resistors. And what was in here was 56 uh, kilo ohm resistors. So the thresholds, quite a lot bigger now the 56k is what it, it even on the ic itself that's what they recommend um but they did have a situation in which you know if you wanted to have a higher threshold one of them was like a 110 kilo ohm resistor so this is the closest i had to that it's quite a bit above that but it works now <laughs> I'm curious if I'm gonna end up just killing speakers with this thing. It's a bit of an experiment. In terms of, I mean, don't be too concerned about the safety of this thing because it's for personal use. Um, I use this kind of stuff mostly to, mostly to just teach myself to better get to get better at troubleshooting this thing. I mean, this thing, I've, I've been working on this for like two weeks. This thing has just kicked my ass. I don't, <laughs> I, I, it, it was like all my fault because I was trying to troubleshoot it without those, uh, <laughs> the main in and the main out not being connected. So I was not getting any signal. But even after that, this this thing is it confused me. I've never messed with IC stuff before, especially like <laughs> anything like this. But I got it working, so I don't know if if this will kill some speakers. I, I'm sure some of you will have uh, opinions about this, and I I do want to hear them. Uh, if, if they're strong enough, I will probably undo this, and I'll, uh, I guess I can uh, continue to look at this, but from my perspective, it's now playing, um, and it's, it seems to be working fine, so, yeah, I'm going to, to uh, gonna put those in correctly on the other side of the board, and then clean it up and wrap this thing up. So I'm just going to put this tuner board back in. And it, in retrospect, this fix is like, yeah, my uh, carbon monoxide alarm keeps going off, so I took out the battery. <laughs> so <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, I'm not going to say it's fixed, but <laughs> it plays music now, which is better than when I got it. Uh, overall, this thing really wasn't that dirty. The, the worst was just this like sticky glue tape stuff on that display. I did get most of it off. Uh, but I, yeah, I don't know what that was. And then there's a just a tiny bit of paint chipped off uh, right in the center of it. But otherwise, it's in actually in really good condition. 
Uh, all these knobs are in really nice nick. And yeah, they really weren't that dirty. The I take this sticker off finally. <laughs> the, uh, the even the top cover of this thing wasn't wasn't that nasty, so it's definitely kept in a pretty good place. But uh, I, I am glad to have uh, finished this thing. Like, like I said, I've, I've worked on this for so long. So I can finally start getting this put back together and start working on something else. So I've got to put the this faceplate back on. So it's got a bunch of screws on the top and the bottom. I've got to plug these uh, LEDs back on. And these were just so difficult to get plugged in. I don't know if I was doing this wrong, but they just did not want to get plugged in. They just kept, well, you'll see. Yeah, they just kept doing that. This whole time, I had to straighten those out so many times. I'm amazed that I didn't break the leads on that. And uh, honestly, the filthiest part of this was definitely the back. Just lots of dust. I mean, I guess if you're using this, you never are really cleaning the back. And then this handle on the back was probably the filthiest part of it. So I gotta put these, uh, yep, yeah, yeah. Had to put those on before I put everything else on. So <laughs> had to just had to take all that apart again. <laughs> I can put the plastic uh, covers on it now. Only on these buttons, the knobs are fine. They can go on without the, uh, or they can go on with the front cover on it. So, and I gotta say, I I really I enjoy putting these knobs on. It's very satisfying. Just a nice uh, topper whenever you're done fixing something. And it still works, thank goodness. But that'll be it. It's kind of working. Uh, it's playing music. <laughs> so that's all I wanted from it. So I thank you for watching and uh, I hope you all have a nice day.